Hello, it's a Q&A day, it's a Q&A day. Been a while since I've done one of these. So what will we talk about today? I've got loads of questions set up. Uh, looking forward to it. Um, so let me get the wee, press the wee buttons here. Remove that out of the way there. Uh -huh. Pause that there. Open that up there. Still with me? <laughs> Showed my skills there with the computer. Press that button there. Um, so let's, the first question today is, what inspired these are the days? Jill Longhurst. Good question, Jill. Hello. Well, the the, the whole idea of the, the the song came from me thinking back one day about my childhood growing up in uh, Clyde Bank when uh, when I was a young boy running about the ages of eight and nine and all my friends, what we used to do, uh, you know, uh, well, everybody had dogs back then, you know, and uh, the idea was that we would take, get up in our summer, summer mornings and we would take my dogs and we'd go up to where I grew up in the Patrick Hills. Well, I never grew up in the hills, but we'd go up there with our dogs and we'd, we'd uh, run about, spend the whole day there just shooting the breeze and, you know, laughing and joking and, and simpler times just that you know, and that started that was the kind of idea the nucleus the start of the song came from that uh no one ever thought that the days would end you know those times where it's like endless summers just simpler times and that's what started the idea of the song so these are the days came from uh my childhood and it's interesting in the video that uh that you'll see for the songs these are the days um I found some footage uh, that was filmed and documented by a gentleman called Owen McGuigan, uh, who, who at a time in Clyde Bank where I grew up, it was changing. So all the shipyards and stuff were uh, kind of closing. But most importantly, the, the main high street in, in Clyde Bank, where I fondly remember, was, was being pulled down and and uh, so the, all the high street shops were moving away and they were creating one of these big massive um, shopping centres. And he documented the, uh, the the demise of that little high street because it was brilliant, you know, it was a brilliant place growing up, you know, I had all the, you know, I had the corner uh, of where I grew up, uh, you know, I go down to the bottom of Kilbowie Road as it was called in Claybank and... Uh, that's where Woolworths was, and one of my aunties worked in there. So I was always a sure a bag of pick and mix. And uh, that's where I bought my first records. All those sort of things are all kind of tied up there. So that's exciting. I don't know what, I don't know why I went down that road there. Oh, you're right, I was talking about the video. So it was good to be able to get that archive footage in it. It just made it rather special for me. So I hope that answers your question, Jill. Longhurst. Take care. Mwah! Hello, next question. Who are the musicians who are playing on the song Gordon Jones? Well, it was great for me here because, uh, you know, I wanted to try a completely different band. I wrote the, the, the song with uh, um, with Chris Sheehan and uh, Ronan Hardiman. Um, and it was probably one of the first songs that we wrote for this album. Matter of fact, if, if truth be known, it was written about a year before the rest of them. And I had it parked up. And so that was really essentially the first song. But the musicians that, that uh, James Halliwell cast on this were just wonderful, great players that I've never ever played with before. So that's what made it really appealing to me also that uh, I could play with different imaginations. And, you know, so the players that are on it were like uh, people like Paul Stacey and his brother Jeremy, Charlie on bass, Paul on guitar. Uh, I've heard, and you know, so but but they've all played in different bands, you know, from I don't know, I guess like from Oasis to I don't know King Crimson and everything in between. That's just talking about some of the Stacey brothers, you know. So, but that's the the musicians who played on that, and and they brought a certain sound to this record that I just absolutely adored, you know, with uh, Andrew Sheps producing it, who I'm a massive fan. I'm a great producer, and this was like you know for me. It was a good situation to find myself in where I wasn't familiar with the people, so it kind of made me interact with the songs in a different way. So, yeah, I hope that answers your question. 
Good question, Gordon. All the best. Oh, no, it's still there. I thought you turned it off. <laughs> okay, back on try. I looked cool. Look at me looking cool. Okay. What is your favourite line in the song? Oh, these are the days. Oh, well, Chris came up with a wonderful line called, uh, and it goes, And we rolled like thunder, blue jean legends. I love that, blue jean legends. That imagery that that creates. And we rolled like we invented Saturday night. You know, which is just, that's that kind of youth enthusiasm thing, you know, that you have when you're a wee guy. Well, I, I certainly did have, it. you know, that you were breaking new ground all the time and life's forever, you know, and that enthusiasm of when, the, you know, on a Saturday night when you're going out and, you know, you're, you're invincible. You feel that way. That's what youth and that's all the good things that, that you have when you're, and, and when you're uh, young and life's unfolding for you. So that's, that's my favourite line, Blue Jean Legends. And we roll like we invented Saturday night. Ah, it's a great line. Very good. So that's my favourite line. Good question. I wonder. Sharon. Hey, Sharon. Oh, I know you. Do you still feel nervous and excited releasing new music? Yeah. Uh, yeah, you bet. You know, because you've, you spend all that time making the album, writing the album, and you hope that when it, you know, when it gets released that people will have that connection that they've always had with you as an artist. Well, that's what I hope for anyway, and they'll, and they'll really understand where you are musically, you know, with it, and get excited in the way that I get excited about the songs. Because, you know, when I'm writing, I'm, I'm thinking to myself, well, that's, that's a keeper. That one will definitely make the make the album. And, you know, and I always try and imagine what it would be like when I'm when I'm playing it live and what would they interact... This would be a good interaction one for people. And, you know, I love the feelings that they evoke as, you know, as you're writing them and you think... Oh yeah, I, I I I think they'll like that. You know, I I I don't know who I'm who I'm. I say I don't know who I'm writing for. Of course, I, you know, I, I, you know, I have this feeling that uh, when when I'm writing that you'll all be there. You know, I, I, you know, and come on board with me. But yeah, I do get nervous, and I think that's good because it's the fear of the unknown, and you, you know, you don't want to put a step wrong with your uh, when you when you're writing or or write songs that that you don't get because ultimately, I'm. Uh, I feel as if I've been blessed to have an audience that are, that are extremely brave, whether or not I'm singing song time or whether or not I'm singing a wet, wet, wet classic or, or, you know, or going off in, you know, some of the tangents that I do in my solo work, you know, which is, which is not, 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 sometimes not so poppy, you know, and they might need for you to sit and listen and invest a little piece of yourself in it. And, and that's, you know, I must admit, that's where I get more switched on with those songs, you know, it might not necessarily be the single, it might be, you know, like a great album track, and you know, and I've always felt that way. So yeah, I think it's important you get nervous and never take nothing for granted, especially, you know, with uh, this being like I think it's like my my twelfth solo album. So, you know, I've been busy. I just want it to be good, and I want you to embrace it, and you know, and you know, I can get off in the music. That's all I can ever wish for, and then get out there and sing it for you live, which is, and that's when it's. And the songs grow again, you know. I always find that once you make it in a record, then, then you know, you've captured that. But then songs that, uh, you know, as each each time you go out on the road, you can they, they become different to you. And especially the work that I did in, you know, maybe my early teens, you know, when I was writing, you know, when I, when I approach it now in my 50s, you know, there's other ways to set the shop up. I'm not trying to change the wheel. Just give it new spokes sometimes and, and try and see what it does or it will resonate with you in a different way or... And I think that's the beauty of a well-crafted pop song or a good song in general. That they're, they're, they're pliable. They can try them. There's different treatments you can have. It doesn't necessarily mean that it's the right treatment, but you know, it's sometimes good to go on these wee journeys with the songs. You know, some some land correctly, and some you go, well, I'm not do that again, or that didn't work. But it was certainly fun doing it, and that's ultimately why. Sometimes you don't change it just for the sake of changing it. It's got to come from within that you think. I, I, you know, I believe in this. That this is a this this is a good, good road to take the song down, and it's interesting for people who come to see you on a regular basis live to see it portrayed in a different way. So because it you know trips them out, gets them talking, gets your audience talking, thinking, oh, I like that interpretation, or I didn't like that interpretation, and that's cool too. So, good question.
Okay, next question. See, I'm looking at these and I can see those wee circles on my glasses. And it's those light. Hold on, let me get that. So they're just right in it. How do I get... Look at that shot. <laughs> That's a wee light. Yeah, I don't know. Apparently this helps with the lighting. I need all the help I can get, darling. But, um... Next question is... Leanne Andrews. Hi, Leanne. Hello. Question. What will you be doing on your birthday this year? Will there be a birthday cake? There's always any excuse for cake. Let them eat cake. Um, yes, it's coming up to my, my birthday. And you know what? This will be my set. Yeah, probably this will be my second birthday in lockdown. Because we'll not, I don't think we'll be out of it by March the 23rd. March the 23rd is my birthday. Um, so, yeah, you've got to, uh, you know, I love a cake. Maybe, you know, recently... I kind of posted some pictures of my, my my cooking and my baking. No, I won't bake my own birthday cake. I'll, you know, I'll find one. I want to enjoy it. I always think that sometimes when, when I cook, because I love cooking, by the time that it's ready to eat the meal, I've usually picked my way through it, tasting it. And, you know, I prefer watching other people eat my food than, you know, than sometimes I like it. Because you're critical, or I am, of most things I do. I mean, I could be a wee bit better. I wonder, I wonder how that would be, you know. Typical me, you know, always trying something. Oh, let's try and put, what happens if you do this? What happens? You know, but uh, there will definitely be cake as I enter happy birthday to me. Lockdown to birthday. Yeah, but that'll no go. No, it will not bother me. Bring it on. Oh, Sue says, hello, Marty. Any chance of a message for Josh? He's had his jab and was so brave and you had yours too. Hello, Josh. Well done you. I see a wee picture there of you. With your Winter Wonderland Tammy on, looking good. Is that your teddy bear you got there too? Is that your wee buddy? Nice. Looking good, Josh. So, hello, Josh. Oh, was it, was it with your jag sore? Uh, I don't know how I feel. I mean, you're not my jag. Uh, I don't like jags. Especially the dentist. But that's another story, Josh. You're looking good there. Got your mask on. Love it. Carly says, the stargazer image above your profile picture looks really futuristic and cinematic. Please... Can I ask what inspired it? Well, yeah, you, uh, good question, Carly. Well, I always loved that image of Marlon Brando, you know, when he was on his bike, you know, and th th those cool pictures of him in the fifties wearing his his leather hat, you know, and I loved uh, some of the some of the early Bowie stuff as well when uh, they had that kind of really quite this quite almost soldier like look to it, you know, and I, I, and I, that really appealed to me for this image, something that was really quite strong. And, uh, you know, it is futuristic because I was talking quite a lot about a movie that uh, was, I can't, oh, I can't remember the name of it now, it's escaped me, but it was one where Jenny Agatha was in it, Jenny Agatha, and uh, you grew up and you would have a little disc in your hand and if you were by a certain age, and it was kind of futuristic, um, Logan's Run, Logan's Run, Logan, Logan's Run, I think it was called, and, I, you know, I, I loved that movie and I loved it. The, the way it made me feel when I, and I was kind of thinking about that kind of futuristic look and so you've nailed it you've really you've really got you've really got it you know and it is a it's a very strong image you know uh, in in the way that uh, uh, you know because Simon Simon took the photographs that way in the way he lit it you know and it's quite you know I'd like to think that one eye was smiling you know I kind of you know but it can kind of looks straight down the straight down the lens but I, I really liked it I wanted to try something completely different even with the styling of the the album cover of Stargazer when you'll see it when it gets released it's it's really quite uh, the whole feel was very 70s and some of the way that we stylized it oh, when I get to wear this really outrageous suit that, I, that I've got that I thought I'd never find a home for ever wearing but I just wanted to have fun with it no, because in lockdown, I've been, you know, obviously, you're just, well, you're in lockdown, you know, so the chance to go out and dress up and play a little bit when you're doing photo sessions is, you know, I, I love that whole day. I, lo I love all that. Just try to push the envelope a little bit out with how you can go with, the, where you can go with the clothes and what imagery, the images or, or feelings that will create through the photograph. So, good question. Sue Jane Mandig says, if you could launch a recording of one self pen song into space, or extraterrestrial life to discover your music, what would it be? Wow, good question. Just trying to imagine what kind of mixtape ET would make, you know? Would I make the grade? Um, 
Stargazer, clues in the title, isn't it, really? Um, which I'm sure you'll be becoming familiar when uh, once the album gets released. So, yeah, Stargazer. Yeah. And also, where did you film the video of These Are The Days? Well, I filmed a video of These, These Are The Days in, uh, in London. It was weird kind of doing it, you know, because of the, you know, you know, not only did you have to have all the right, correct permits and permission, it was just weird being in the streets of London at a certain time and there was just no one there. You know, so it was all, it was all a night time shoot falling through the, through the night. So it was very quiet and it's kind of, you know, it's got a real kind of vibe about it. But, um, you know, I hope you enjoy it. So it was, yeah, I filmed it in London. You know, and it's always nice to, because I put out some teasers and people are saying, oh, that's definitely Clyde Bank or that's, you know, that's that's a part in Glasgow. And it does, you know, but I always think it's because of those shape, that certain time that every railway bridge in every city had a certain look. And you know, and there's a couple of shots where I, where I focus in on that, and uh, you probably pick it up and go, Oh, that's that bridge in such and such a place. But um, yeah, I would launch Stargazer album into space, and the, uh, it was filmed in London. So, good question, Sue. Hello, Suzanne Mead. Who's questioning a new single inspired to you? Right, all right, I know, I answered your question. Oh, but there's another bit of your question that I didn't answer. Is it, when are you going on tour? Oh, when it's safe, when it's safe, you know, I mean, I can't wait, I really miss that. And especially with this album, you know, because it's got a certain feel to it that will really lend itself to that live, that live world. And, uh, oh, I can't wait to get out there and do that, come and sing for you all. You know, it's something that I took for granted that's been taken away from me. That is a real important part of my DNA. So once it's, once it's cool to get out there, I can't wait to come out and sing for you. So I will get busy in that world, but only when it's safe. And then, boom, I'll announce that. I mean, I, if there's things penciled in, but do you announce it and then it gets changed? I don't know. You know, I'm just waiting for the people who look after me in that world to see, to make that right decision for me. And most importantly, when it's safe. Can't wait out there and come party with Marty, as we say. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, well, I'll kick it up a gear and you will be ready. Hello, Jane McClintock. Hello. <laughs> Hi, Jane. We question for you in the Q&A. Marty, did you ever get any trouble for taking good clothes out to the rag and bone man just to get a balloon? You bet. That was a rite of passage, wasn't it? Every time you would hear that wee guy coming along your street, you know, the rag and bone man, you know, with the... I always had a wee bugle and one guy used to use a whistle and you would just run straight to your mum and say, right, mum, what have we got? What, you know, let's start giving away your good winter coats so you can get a balloon and a comedy whistle or something. And I miss it. That, 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 I have so many great memories of that because every kid demanded something, especially when I grew up down Muir, they'd come along the street and the guy that would do the one an hour street, he had a horse too, you know, so it was a kind of, a kind of horse and cart. And we'd all give our clothes and stuff like that, and we'd get wee, wee trinkets. So, yeah, I did that too. That's a great question, Jane. And uh, so, brilliant. Hope you're keeping well. All the best. Hector Harrison, official. Would love any advice for a young song, uh, songwriter like myself at 17. Well, believe in it, Hector. You know, believe in what you do. Um, don't be in a hurry to be in a hurry. At 17, you're still finding your feet and discovering what you, where you're going to go as an artist. It's a very exciting time in your career, you, uh, you know, when you start off that because, you know, you're looking for your inspiration and to, for for the start of your, uh, your your journey. Hopefully it'll be one of success. You've got a great wee look there, I can see. I had a wee look there. Um, so, yeah, keep doing what you do. Well, you kind of look like a, kind of look like a young James Taylor. Oh, but, yeah, you got a great look there. So you've no good problems there, and uh, so yeah, just keep, stick to your stick to your guns and enjoy the process, and don't be too hard on yourself when you're seventeen and you're writing songs. That's one thing I remember. You know, uh, you know, when I look back at it, I have the luxury of looking back at time. You know, the time, and you look back at your work that you maybe did when you were seventeen and eighteen, and you think, oh, you know what? I gave myself a hard time for that, but it's really good. Because you, you hear it with different ears. So enjoy the process and, and I, wish, I wish you the best. All the best, Hector. Ruth Waits, you're going to be 50? I was 50 once. <laughs> what did I do? I was doing Blood Brothers and I remember it well. And 
it's a great time, isn't it? It's something to be celebrated, you know, but uh, I hope you have a wonderful day, Ruth, uh, on your 50th. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, swinging by. Yeah, 50, who cares about that? It's all how you feel up here, and most importantly in here. So, have a good day. Okay, that's me. That's enough from me. I'm going to love you and leave you. And uh, thank you very much for your positive response for uh, These Are The Days and how much you're looking forward to my new album. And I can't wait to get for, for it to fall in your ears and can't wait to see you and, and have a dance with you. So, on that note, lots of love. Take care and see you soon. Mwah!